Welcome back students for Sushik Biology. So today let us revise about the digestion and absorption. And those who want to revise the last chapters, kindly see the link given in the description. And if you like this way of revision, kindly share and subscribe. How will you define the digestion process? So the process by which the complex food are converted into simple absorbable forms are termed as digestion. And uh, this digestive system uh, of our system, it consists of uh, alimentary canal and various digestive glands. And you can see in the diagram, so the digestive system uh, it, or the alimentary canal, it begins with the mouth and uh, it leads to the buccal cavity and ends in anus. And the buccal cavity consists of number of teeth and the muscular tongue. And uh, this uh, food pipe, it is called as esophagus and it leads to the stomach. And stomach is continued by small intestine and large intestine. And uh, after the large intestine, we are having the rectum where all the excretory particle will be stored. And then it is excreted through anus. And uh, pancreas, liver are all beside the stomach. So they will also help in digestion. Next we will come to dentition. So uh, in our body, the teeth are considered as the hardest structure and the type, number and the arrangement of the set of teeth, it only represents the dentition. So what is meant by dentition? The arrangement of the set of teeth and the different types and number, they are called as dentition and uh, heterodont, thecodont and diphyodonts are the characteristic uh, dentitions of human and we are having two sets of teeth, namely one temporary set and one permanent set. And the set of temporary milk, it is otherwise called as deciduous teeth and uh, it is replaced by a set of permanent or adult teeth. So, such type of um, two types of dentition, it is called as diphyodont. Whereas, the heterodont, heterodont uh, shows uh, different types of uh, teeth, namely incisors, canine, premolars and molars. And thecodon means the teeth are embedded in deep socket. So these are the different types of. So here you can you can see the uh, image of homodont and heterodont. Homodont means uh, all the teeth are uh, similar in structure, whereas heterodont they are differing uh, in their structure. So mostly some animals have homodont uh, structure of teeth. So whereas uh, humans and the other uh, higher animals, they contain heterodont and these are the different types of teeth we have. So the molars, premolars and canine incisors. So all are embedded in a socket of jaw. And next one is dental formula. So the method of expressing or describing the total number of teeth in man and animals according to the arrangement. So it is called as uh, dental formula. And this formula, it is based on the four types of teeth like incisor, canine, premolar and molar. And uh, the formula is uh, written as the number of each type of teeth in the upper jaw divided by the number of teeth on one side of the lower jaw. So this is the dental formula. So it is uh, both in uh, numbers and letters. So first uh, ICPM, you can remember it as ICPM. So I means incisors. C for canine, P for premolar and M for molar. And uh, number indicates the number of incisors and number of canine like that. The number represents the number of incisors, canine, premolar and molar. So, uh, two incisors and one canine, two premolar and three molar uh, in the upper jaw. And uh, we are having two incisors, one canine, two premolar and three molar in lower jaw. So, um, this is the dental formula. And in humans, we are having two dental formula, namely for primary dentition and permanent dentition. And uh, primary dentition is for 20 teeth and the dental formula is equal to 10. So you can apply this formula and uh, you can easily understand. And for permanent dentition, we are having 32 teeth. So the, the dental formula is 16. The next important uh, point is the our oral cavity, it leads to pharynx. Uh, it is a pharynx. What is meant by pharynx? It is a common passage for food and air. And uh, it is considered as the part of the throat behind the mouth and nasal cavity and above the esophagus and larynx. And uh, 
uh, the pharynx is divided into three parts namely nasopharynx oropharynx and laryngopharynx so the nasopharynx is the upper part and uh, oropharynx this followed the nasopharynx and it uh, ends in laryngopharynx and the next one is important uh, term is epiglottis so you can see the epiglottis structure it is a lid like structure that covers both the trachea and esophagus so we are having the trachea and esophagus uh, together uh, so there is a lid above the trachea and uh, esophagus so this epiglottis what is the role of epiglottis is it prevents the entry of food into the trachea so that is the main function of epiglottis so the next part is stomach so the stomach is having three regions namely cardiac region fundus region and pyloric region so you can uh, see the image so esophagus it leads to the stomach so the upper part is known as fundus region and the middle part of the stomach is called as cardiac region and the end of the stomach is termed as pyloric region and it the pyloric end only it leads to the duodenum and the next important point is gastroesophageal sphincter so sphincter is nothing but a soft muscle uh, it is called a sphincter so gastroesophageal sphincter uh, what is the role means it regulates the opening of the esophagus and it controls the passage of the food to the stomach so you can see the esophagus here and here the sphincter muscle is closed and it prevents the uh, back flow back flow of the food contents uh, to the esophagus so in healthy Uh, individuals it will be closed like this whereas uh, yeah, disease ge or the gerd that means gastroesophageal reflex disease so all the food particle will again into enter into the uh, esophagus region so that is called as uh, gerd disease and the next part is small intestine so small it, uh, intestine is divided into three regions namely duodenum jejunum and ileum you can see the diagram so duodenum is uh, followed by the stomach and after duodenum we are having jejunum and then ileum and one more sphincter is there it is called as pyloric sphincter so the it guards the opening of the stomach into duodenum so you can see in the image so we are having the pyloric sphincter here uh, so it prevents the opening of the stomach or it only um, decide whether to open or not so it guards the opening of stomach into duodenum part it is called as pyloric and the next important uh, gland is gastric gland so in gastric gland we are having many types of cells so that is very important so the mucus neck cells so the role is uh, to secrete mucus and the second one is peptic cells they are otherwise called as cheap cells so they will secrete proenzyme or pepsi uh, proenzyme pepsinogen and the third one is parietal cells it is otherwise called as auxintic cells so they only secrete the hcl hydrochloric acid and intrinsic factor and uh, all the gastric glands and crypts of uh, liberquin uh, liberquin they are present in the mucosal region so you can view uh, the crypts of liberquin here so they are present in the intestinal mucosa region so these are the finger like projection Uh, called as villi so they help in absorption of food next uh, we will uh, see the salivary gland so the salivary glands there are three pairs of major salivary glands in our body and uh, they are the parotid glands so the first one you can see the image parotid gland and uh, they are the largest salivary glands and located in just uh, in front of the ears and the next one is submaxillary so submaxillary means um, they are the minor salivary glands and sublingual sublingual it is present below the tongue so according to the position uh, we are having the three types of uh, sal salivary glands so again uh, the bile juice so it also helps in the digestion of food it is secreted from the hepatic lobules of the liver and pancreas the important question is pancreas it acts both as exocrine and endocrine uh, gland uh, so it can uh, also secrete uh, hormones so insulin glucagon all are secreted here only 
so it acts both as exocrine and endocrine gland and the pepsin it is an enzyme that converts protein into protease and peptones and renin is the enzyme which digests the milk in infants and the intestinal juice it contains maltase enzyme it acts on maltose and the next one is absorption so all the food after they get digested they will uh, undergo absorption so the absorption of nutrients it is carried out by the three process namely simple diffusion or it may happen by facilitated diffusion or by active transport and here the important calorific values of food are given so for carbohydrates the calorific value is 4.1 kilocalories per gram uh, that means 1 gram of carbohydrate can yield 4.1 kilocalories of energy and the proteins uh, it is having 5.65 kilocalories per gram whereas fats they are having the high energetic value uh, calorific value that is 9.45 kilocalories per gram so all the digested food components so the digested food components are absorbed into the blood from mouth stomach small intestine and large intestine and the drugs are absorbed in the mouth and water simple sugars and alcohol they are absorbed in the stomach region and simple carbohydrate fatty acids amino acids etc they are absorbed in small intestine region and the water some minerals and drugs are absorbed in large intestine so the undigested waste particles what will happen they are removed through the anus by the process called defecation so this is the digestive system and the next one is next one is disorders of digestive system so the first disease is jaundice so this is caused due to the liver damage and due to the deposition of bile pigment so jaundice we are having three types of jaundice namely pre hepatic hepatic and post hepatic and second uh, disorder of digestive system is vomiting so it is due to the ejection of stomach contents through the mouth and also it results in nausea and uh, the third uh, disorder is diarrhea and constipation they are due to the abnormal bowel movements and uh, frequent bowel movement and reduced food absorption are the features of diarrhea so you can differentiate uh, the diarrhea and the constipation so the frequent bowel movement and reduced food absorption are the features of diarrhea whereas retention of fecus in rectum and irregular bowel movements are the symptoms of constipation and the next one is indigestion it is due to the lack of enzyme secretion and uh, uh, <coughs> etc and the next these are the famous uh, disorders that is malnutrition protein energy malnutrition it is common in underdeveloped countries and uh, it affects mostly infants and children and the next one is koshiarkar uh, and uh, marasmus disorder so the deficiency of proteins and calories results marasmus whereas deficiency of proteins results koshiarkar disorder thank you for watching and uh, in the next session we will see about the breathing and the exchange of gases kindly like share and subscribe thank you